you so much. Hi everyone and thank you for joining us again uh, on this beautiful sunny afternoon. I wish that uh, the circumstances would be so differently um, and due to this COVID-19 we are located in this lovely and very beautiful studio of L'Oreal Copenhagen so thank you again. Um, well having this pot and broadcast um, we are streaming live and if you missed out on the other one we already did, you can go to the L'Oreal Pro Nordic. And on YouTube? On YouTube, yes indeed. And um, have a view over there. And before to get started on this second live stream, I would love to welcome my dearest Sophie. And, um, well, you are here Heidi, Mark is there. And so, Sophie, thank you for joining me on this little chit chat today. Thank you, it's and a pleasure. I think we should we shall get started oh, because we have a lot definitely. to tell. Good idea. Good, Good idea. idea. So tell me, a lot of pre-work has been done on your lovely lady, I see. Yes, indeed. So um, I started a little bit of work before we started. So I'm going to start out by showing you the way it's um, the technique is put onto the shape here. So what you see is two triangular shapes. One is going from the tip of the triangular shape from the nape area all the way back and then going into the white side of the triangular shape in the back at the hairline. The other one is starting also from the nape area but having the white side here and then going to the triangular shape with the tip ending at the back. So you have these two getting integrated and because we have the rounded shape of the head, it's important that we have the rounded shape as well in the sectioning because or else we're not going to have a full and good integration from the different sections. Very nice Miss mm -hmm. Sophie. <coughs> so I'm wondering, I mean, it could be any kind of colors within the foils. Yes, exactly. Yes. You could go for the blonde ones, you could go for the darker ones. Coppery tones, brown Coppery, tones, whatever any you wishes. Prefer. Any wishes, whatever you prefer. Mm -hmm. Having different shades in, of course, the foils and the base color. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a really good way of thinking foils in a new way. So mm. instead of just having straight up foils, sides, top, in, uh, and all in the, the way around, way. in the classic way, mm -hmm. this is another way to do foils, to have a really, really good integration and to have it um, looking in a new, brand new way. Oh, it's nice. And I love the way you did your foils. Maybe yeah. you could show. Yeah, let's see if we can go to the other camera here. Yeah. How you placed them. Yeah. Because uh, I know that you are pretty MC with uh, the way you do <laughs> your foils. Yeah. So uh, meaning that uh, they don't just come in any kind of uh, packaging or no, any no. kind of uh, looking. No, always using the foils here to get to be able to have the, the regrowth as little as possible or so it will last for as long as it can yeah so really going from where it grows and then to all the way out so having the rounded shape when you see it from the front here you can see the small one with the tip and then the other one also from the front so you can see it's put on as uh, you see on the um, on the drawing behind me yeah so here you can see the rounded wow <laughs> around a chair. You're playing with the doll now. <laughs> Ooh, she's very frisky, this girl. Okay, so you can see the rounded shape here, going from the from to, from the, the front to all the way to the back, to the narrow side here. It's beautiful. And it looks like the uh, the uh, Sydney Opera. Yeah, house. yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good yeah. way to say it. Yeah, yeah and you can see the rounded nice. shape here as well. Really, really good to see the rounded shape. Maybe I can go to the camera here as well. Yeah. So this was the first model and beautiful. I'll just go pick up my and next model. And I will model. show you some pictures later on where we use this technique um, working in longer hair. Obviously it works in, in both long and shorter hair, but it's, as Sophie says, an amazing way to work with foils and maybe the sectioning in a different, in a different classic way to use the foils. Okay, so bringing here my next model, mm -hmm. where there is the base color, as you see here, pre-made. And now I'm going to twist here so you can see the next partings. 
All right, so if we swap the camera here, perfect. Okay, so here is three sections going still from the rounded shape from the front. So a triangular shape here going to a square and then following all the way diagonally. So we had the integration because we had the base color going on top. So now I'll put, uh, I'll use foils on the square section and the other two colors will be the same. So here you have the good integration and because we have the di diagonal shape, you can see here as well, that it, this one is gonna fall on top of the other one. So that's what I'm gonna do for now. I'm really loving the parting you did from, I mean, the color you already applied, so mm -hmm. uh, if you would show the way that it again emphasizes yeah, the, the head shape. shape. Yeah, So every time we do the colors, I mean, one thing is to do recipes and to do some, some, some bright colors within being blonde, brown, or copperish. It's, um, it's a matter of knowing where to to, to actually put them as well because one thing is to have a beautiful shiny color but uh, all you guys hairdressing business uh, you know how 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 um, how much it can you know kind of do something good to the hair and to the shape and to the haircut and uh, also the other way around so if it's not put in the right position uh, it's really 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 uh, or it can be a mess uh, color wise so uh, I love the way you did your your little shape dividing the the hair in in half yeah. all right so let's get on and have some colors um, and pictures to show you the first one I'd like to show you is the um, it's the front cover uh, and as you can see it's uh, Medina and she's uh, she's a diva and a star oh yes indeed and Mark had the pleasure of um, doing her hair back then when she did this uh, coming to Medina uh, and he did both the cut and color and what you see right now is a beautiful classic graduated bob and the color is a rich brown and elegant uh, chocolate-ish color. So so uh, would you say when doing the, the chocolate colors, mm -hmm. um, having in mind that one thing is the depth but uh, if you have to give me some uh, some ideas mm -hmm. uh, within playing with the warm and the cool tones, mm -hmm. would you say any um, any recommendations? I mean, do you do you go for the warm like the primary and and maybe then the cooler one as the secondary, or how do you think about the brown the the, the brown colors? Um. A good thing is always to have both the warm and the cold within the same color. Mm -hmm. Because when we do that, we get an, uh, another way to, you get another expression in the colors than just taking a normal tone and just a straight up one. Mm -hmm. So even th though we have a, let's say an 8 to 3 mm -hmm. with a 5.8, mm -hmm. then we get this really, really nice tone because we also use different tones um, to mix. Mm -hmm. So even, it, you know, I mean, even even the look of just a simple classic brown color, you are paying a lot of attention, a lot of thoughts into the mixture itself. Yeah. And for instance, this this color is a dia richesse. Mm -hmm. We love dia richesse. Oh yes. We use it, you know, as often as we can. Um, we love the shine, we love all the benefits of using the Dear Richesse and what we really, really, really like is to push it in the dimensions of going into a dark one, mm -hmm. lifting a bit and even more progressive with the 6%, yeah? yeah? All right, so this is the next picture as well. You really see now what the, what the brown uh, color can do. Obviously, it's a... Uh, it's, it's so a, shiny. Oh, yes, oh it's God, a picture, so lots of lights on it. Yeah. But yet you see the the brilliance underneath, and, and that's what it's all about. All right, so moving on to the next color. I just want to say something. All right, Mark is That it. is, remember that you can go on YouTube as well. So you can go in, you can see a high-quality video there. You can also ask us questions if you want to. So go on YouTube, the L'Oreal Pro Nordic uh, channel, and we'll be live streaming from there. So just a little information. Yeah, Kira? And this is the picture being slightly coming to when you're going into the L'Oreal Pro Nordic. So you're looking behind the scene on this channel, and I'm going live on the other one. 
All right, so um, moving on from all this um, technique, we are in uh, now looking at the beautiful picture. And this is one of my favorites, Sof. Yeah, I love it I as well. I know you love it as well, yeah, oh, exactly. Yes. And this whole, um, or the next three pictures you are going to see is from um, a collection called Tapier. And uh, for you who maybe uh, haven't met or haven't, uh, haven't uh, been introduced to the Tapier, it's a Spanish artist. And he's really, really known for his mixed media paintings. That means he's incorporated uh, marble, dust, um, to have this textured kind of feeling to his paintings. And the way that we work with, uh, with the tapier and the feeling of having um, different layers and different, uh, different feelings into the color mm -hmm. was, uh, was working with the tapier. So this color you see now is a, uh, is a bleach. Yeah. And maybe so while you are painting on your, on your head, yeah. um, you could tell us about the bleach. Because I know that, as we said on the previous uh, thing, you love bleach. I love, you love bleach, bleaching. Yeah. Um, it's like the Holy Grail. So, yeah. uh, so this li li this little texture, um, which is putting into the 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 the, b the base color, actually, does a whole lot of action. Tell us about what you what you did when you when you colored that blunt piece. Yeah, it, it's actually a good reference to the piece that I'm doing now. Yeah, because. As you can see, I have to put um, place my foils at first because if I place the full base around it, then it's going to be too difficult for me to uh, to do my work. Mm -hmm. So always doing my foils first, making sure that it's fully, fully placed in the right manner, really taking care that I do the same in every sense all the way through um, and making sure that nothing is is going out to towards um, or like bleeding out you could say mm -hmm. towards my sections on the sides mm. so the reason for doing these sectionings or in the foils is to make sure you get a, an even color if it, because if you just uh, do a bleach or the section you wouldn't get it as clean and white as you see on uh, on the photo and one thing is when you when you um, when you place the color mm -hmm. everyone knows working with bleach that the color is in action. So, yeah, so while exactly. it's developing, while it's, uh, it's, it's blending with another color, it could be any brands, it's mm -hmm. very important to know where you have the bleach in your foils. Is yes. that correct? Oh, oh right. definitely, yeah. yeah. So I know that you will draw uh, or you will put in the section yeah. uh, right after. Yeah, I can find it now Cop if you prefer. Copper is yeah. a seriously um, underrated color, if you ask me. Um, what do you say about that, Soph? Oh, I love the cover tones. As you can see, I yeah. love the cover yeah. tones. Yeah, I love your hair. Yeah. Um, um, yes, would you say anything else? No, it's it? good. Yeah. And uh, I would say that only 2%, so this is a statement, of the world's population um, has natural red hair. That means either copper or in an auburn tone. Which really? Is, yeah. 2%? 2%, exactly, it's not a lot. yeah. And those lucky ones, yeah. they never they never turn grey, you know. Cuz I mean, obviously really? grey hair fades in a beautiful more rose gold way. Oh yeah, I love the way it fades. That's so yeah. Which you is don't think also about a it. trendy 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 thing to have this ginger rosy pinky tones into the coppery. Yeah, yeah. Lovely. All right. So so um I would love you to uh, just write down the recipe for uh, Miss uh, Miss Joe's afterwards as well. Oh Going yes. into the next picture, this is uh, one of our lovely models as well within the tapier. And uh, as you see, it's a strong copper tone um, compared to the other one, which is so much more pastely. So now moving on to this Inoa, uh, one of my favorites. And just for, for me to, to mention the, the recipe in right now, it's like a 10, 2, 3 mixed with a 6, 4, 0. So a dynamic copper tone, which is giving you all the power within the copper, but still on a very high level. And as you see, it's dramatic and it's solid, but it's still yet, yet, yet pretty and natural to look at. Yeah. All right, so moving on to the last picture. And you just jump in, Sophie, if you have something to, to share with us. No, but I just love the way that you, as we talked about for, before, with having the different tones 
with working with the 10 and then a six. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty naughty, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, because one would say, oh, where would I end? I mean, what depth would it would it would it, would the result be? Exactly. But um, yeah, let's get back to that one because we have the next picture right here. Yeah. And uh, moving on to this. Uh, a little more amber brown sugar oh, kind of feeling. Love that um, shape as well in the haircut. Oh yes, I did the haircut, yeah. uh, and I had so much fun doing the haircut yeah. because it's uh, it's textured, as you can see, so it means natural curls. Yeah. And um, sometimes you would you would say, okay, how to how to create a shape and how to even create a shape and a color in combination with the texture. But uh, I, I I pretty much think that we success with uh, with this uh, lovely color. Mm. And I do remember the recipe being something like a 9.3 together with a 5.8. Yeah. So again, this yeah. really, really funky combination between moving from something pretty light mm -hmm. and into the depth of it. Exactly. And then again, creating this, um, how do you say that, that golden copper brown yeah. shade in one mixture. Yeah. All right. So um, any uh, questions, anyone? Do we have any questions? I actually have one question here, and yes. that is, uh, when you're coloring curls, mm -hmm. is there a difference between coloring curls and coloring straight hair? Oh, that's a really, really nice question. So the question is, uh, do we pay any attention, especially uh, into uh, putting on colors uh, when the hair is curly, so uh, when it's structured, when it's textured? Uh, when you have the texture and the curls in the hair, it's even. It's so important that you also distribute your color evenly, mm -hmm. but put the right amount of color on it as well. And meaning the right amount is that pay attention to how much the hair is going to absorb the exactly. The, the yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah and then very always. Nice point. Yeah, and then always going. At, when I work with the hair like that, I always start up my full application and then go back to just give it the rest of the color. Because if you have any color left, put it onto the hair instead of just throwing it out. Of mm -hmm. course, you should mix the right amount of color. Mm -hmm. But when you have enough color, so it's it's um, moist and you can see it's fully, yeah, fully moist, mm -hmm. um, then that's when you're gonna get the best amount of, uh, of shine on the hair. Mm. Yeah, that's a very important uh, point you've had. And then uh, again, I would say when I do color textured hair, I'm, I'm so much aware of where the hair moves and how the texture is, because if mm. it's really, really, really curly, mm. um, it's also depending on the recipe again, because it's a, it's a matter of how much light and the reflection of yeah, the hair. Exactly. So uh, beautiful question. Any other questions, Mark, at the moment? Before there, we move on, there's actually one more, and that is, do you have any favorite brown color recipes? Oh my God, I have a, <laughs> I have, yeah, like a difficult question because I have a thousand, um, and I'd love to share them all with you because uh, you know my hair, my head is is just like spinning around because, <laughs> I mean, right now we are not able to do any kind of um, like real models. That's why Miss Sophie is on her on her doll head, so. Um, can I get back to that question, or do you want me to just throw one of a one of a million? Yes. Uh, all right. So one of a million would be something in uh, in um, in uh, it could be like something on a depth seven, uh, and I would love to have something like a ten twelve. This is a dear richesse recipe. So let's uh, say with a ten twelve, and in a mixture of a four eight, for example. This is one of my favorite. It leaves the hair with this with this brown but yet transparent um, very natural shape you do have the, uh, the 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 eight coming through but yet again you have the 12 just really really combing down the the eight and the brown so it leaves the hair with this i mean you have to see this recipe so it's a 10 12 together and an mixture with a 4 8. beautiful how much does it have I would say half and half, or even lighter. It would be two parts of the 10, 12, and just one part of the 4, 8. And if you wanted to have even more depth, the other way around, two parts of the 4, 8, and just one part of uh, the 10, 12. And again, a little, um, a little trick would be to use a 6%, just pushing everything within the Dia Richesse mm -hmm. um, to, to really maintain the natural shine and the... the, the, the well, the glow in it. So uh, with the 6% developer. 
here. And when you say glow, we really, really enjoy the new glow colors from the measure. Oh, yes, we yeah. are. And um, really good for the browns as well. Oh, 28, yes. beautiful. Oh, 18. Yes. Loads of recipes. Yeah. You have to hang on to your knickers. Don't <laughs> throw them all away right now because we have another picture. And that picture would go for the uh, bleed. And as Miss Sophie is working all the way through uh, the foils, oh, um, yeah. I know that she did a beautifully run through of the creademic bleed on our last uh, exactly. little sec, or not section, on our last uh, uh, live stream. Yeah. And uh, this is just a picture shown from, uh, from that collection as well, using yes. the, the natural hair. And then working with the regrowth of a uh, of a bleach as well again. Yeah, yeah. And this is actually the first generation of the academic bleach. bleach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as Kira said on the previous stream, you can see how the technique is um, is made. The academic bleach. All right. Yeah? So if you haven't if you haven't seen that one, please check into again the L'Oreal Pro Nordic on YouTube and see the first live stream. Sophie is giving giving. A, uh, a, uh, a lecture, a lecture yeah. in uh, the bleed. So this is just a picture showing you again how much um, the effect goes using a regrowth of a bleach and into a natural hair tone and playing around with the Paul Bryan in different tones. I think we have one more picture. If Mark is, is showing you the next picture. Going into oh, this so uh, a bit more sophisticated pinkish tone again using the Paul Bryant we love Paul Bryant as well yeah um, it's a it's a it's a tool uh, just exactly. combined with the other brands so yeah. everything is just a playground to be yeah. honest but using those uh, very artificial colors on top of any kind of bleach it gives you like a thousand opportunities to play around with yeah. uh, with different colors. And also like a glaze, you could use it. Also like yeah. a glaze. On the browns as well. On the brown yeah. as well, indeed. So moving on to the next picture. We go into a little more salon friendly way. So hopefully you can see the, uh, on the screen, we have this uh, long hair. And uh, there is a funny story to this long hair because when she came in, um, and previous to this funny story is that we have a collab together with uh, with uh, unique models. So she's a pro model, and when she came in, uh, she had uh, a very different looking hair. Um, it was a on a natural depth six, and then with a loads loads of highlights. And I showed the picture to Heidi yesterday, and she was just like, "Oh my god!" Because what you really can't see um, within me telling this story is that on her natural depth she had a lot of um, uh, bleedings and not uh, oh. bleedings in a good way but uh, <laughs> you know when 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 the bleach is coming out of your foils and it's yeah. leaving those marks Ooh, on, as, on as someone said the shot marks exactly yeah. <laughs> so that's uh, where I started and then by doing her hair on the set uh, I did this lovely color and it's also uh, one of my favorites. Uh, it's a 531 uh, together with a 601 and then with a little, little dot of a 78 just to really use this 78 as a, um, a little piece in the, uh, in the recipe. So uh, just on that base, uh, I just told you, we did this Dear Richesse and this is the outcome of a natural, beautiful brown color. And I have a question concerning that. Now you're talking about <clears throat> all these areas, bleach, whatever. Yeah. When you do a recipe like this, mm -hmm. there's a question. Do you do anything to make sure that the color turns beautiful? Meaning in your recipe, when you have bleached out areas, mm -hmm. do you go in and, and do something different with if the I color? If I do my, my pre-pigmentation. Pre Exactly. I think this is the question. Beautiful question. Thank you so much. Um, well, there are so many angles towards the uh, pre-pigmentation. You could either do it directly in the color, and you can do it um, like you do this uh, this this pre-pigmentation. You put on a glaze. You wait for the for the pigments. Obviously, mm. you would go for something orangey, something red, or even yellow to really build up. Um, before you would work further on with any kind of brands. But in this situation, uh, I, um, I have all my, um, 
my uh, my creativity and with that comes my know-how of doing this mixture so by using this recipe 531 601 and with the 78 I didn't have any 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 uh, worries about the pigmentation at all and as you can see on the picture again can we see the picture again Mark you see a clean color straight out from the roots until the ends and it really came out beautifully so this is just one of these uh, colorations where you um, where you clap your hands and you say well thank you for having this beautiful brand called Dear Richess because I mean you could almost do anything with that kind of color uh, having in mind that you do have whatever it takes within the recipe to uh, to clean up that mess I started with so I have a question as well oh yes here. how do you work with the uh, Inua Glow who's just a rat in the market oh yes can I come back to that question it's a lovely oh, question because we do have a little picture moving on from uh, from the other lady you just saw because it's the same lady but I just did her haircut um, and so it was very important for me to show you this picture because everything changes obviously the length is changed because I cut all her hair off <laughs> at the set she was amazing and she was anxious just like me because as I said she's a pro model but um, she was in for a change and so we did it but uh, also the color changes when you do cut long hair the color changes as well mm. so look at now how the 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 color responds how it's 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 still brown obviously but it's so differently because you 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 remove gravity within the within the haircut so just for you to see the 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 shape it really changes within a graduated bob i love this shape and the color as well well thank you the next picture please yes oh yes so now we are moving on for what Miss Heidi just asked us about. I was just a little bit um, early. Sorry, Heidi? I was just a little bit too quick, sorry. Ah, okay. <laughs> yes. So moving on to these next three lovely ladies on the screen, because now we have the latest. <laughs> now <laughs> Introducing. We have, now we have the latest, latest of them all uh, within the Glow family. And for those of one, uh, for, for those of you who has not been introduced or not had the opportunity to work with the Glow, I can only say one thing, get started. Mm. Because now you have everything, um, what we need uh, to, to spice up any kind of either mascherelle or glow. So on this picture, uh, we have had the pleasure of working um, together with the L'Oreal again. And I'll just show it for you. It's the lookbook. It comes like this. And as you see, the three ladies on top is um, the ones that Creademic created, both within cut and color, and in collab with the L'Oreal, of course. So this is the outcome, beautiful material, and I hope that you both have it in your salon, and maybe you have it at home these days, because, I mean, you need something to, to build your creativity on and to educate yourself. And so this is, uh, is the, the picture of uh, the, the darkest one, espresso, uh, lovely mm. dark and flamboyant brown color and you can see other recipes in your lookbook further on to the next picture we have the more uh, again um, sophisticated I would tell uh, in a way that we work with the browns and we work with again having this brown coppery tone in one mixture and finally we have the blonde lady so it's a threesome in a uh, color color threesome so finally you have the the blonde and then again using the glow within a blonde yeah. mixture and one of my favorites i will now reveal one of my favorites Ooh. within the enoa glow yeah and this is the 10 10 and a half point one together with the glow eight i mean naughty naughty combination between colors where you put and you put a lot of pressure into the lift, but still again, you do have this eight. And we love everything about the eight because it can go in, 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 in both warm and cool tones. Mm. Um, and then again, be creative with your peroxide. I mean, either you go with the flow and you just use like a 3%, push it a little bit further into a six, and you get the most out of it with a 9%. Mm. 
And Sophie, you're still painting. I'm still painting. So now going to my second section. Yeah. So it's the same tone I use on the first triangle and then on the next one here as well. Mm -hmm. You can uh, mix it up if you want to. The technique is fully adaptable mm -hmm. in that sense. Okay, cool. Lovely. So as you can see, the reason why I use foils as well mm -hmm. is to be able to lift up my foils as well, mm -hmm. as you can see here. So because I can do that, it's much easier for me to work all the way around in every um, in every way that I use them. So in every technique, it's really nice that you have the placement all the time. Do you have a preference using foils instead of, I know that you know a lot of hairdressers are using like papers and stuff like that? I like um, the way you control the hair in the um, in the foils and the way you bend them and exactly and, and and to to really make sure that you know where the color sticks exactly all right that would be answer enough all right so do we have a picture as well yes i'm just going back to josephine right here because yeah. i have a question how do you when you do a natural blonde high lift color mm -hmm. how do you prefer to do that um very nice question thank you for the question um, I would say doing a perfect high lift, it is depending totally on the undercoats, mm. meaning what is my natural depth to start with. Because everything, I mean, no matter what kind of color you would say um, my end result is going to be, it's totally and always uh, on the circumstances of what am I using. Uh, one thing is the brand and the product but also and always to be sure that you know the depth, meaning the natural depth. So in this case, on Miss Josephine, her natural depth with a six, which is a pretty common Scandinavian uh, depth, working with a loads of highlights just through the top area using a bleach. And that is for me to have this clean platinum feeling. And then in between all my foils, I would use the recipe I just mentioned, which is again a 10.5.1 together with the Glow Aid um, and with a 9%. So, so for me to really achieve this natural looking and without you know having these regrowth and without having this uh, bleach uh, feeling to the hair, because you obviously see the different shades within the, the, you see it's being blonde, it's being golden, it's being cool blonde in one mixture and that's what i really like about this picture oh so you use use both foils and then a base in, in between absolutely yeah absolutely so that would be the answer for having this natural blonde looking uh result um in a combination of having something that's really clean only a bleach can do that and then with a high lift in between so when you do your foils, do you make smaller section? Do you make a it's straight one? It's depending on 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 the look, on, on if the you weave or what oh, you say? just straight yeah. lines, straight lines. Straight lines, but yeah, yeah. But that's something you know. I mean, that's a whole other story. We could we could have another seminar of uh, how to use the sectioning in the uh, in the foils. All right, baby. So um, next picture, please, which is going to be the final picture, because. Uh, this is one of our favorites uh, within Credemic. Uh, we have oh. seen this picture um, in so many different magazines and, and um, online as well. And I always, you know, refer to this picture because this is, you know, it's a box, um, a box bob. And it's what I call a clean white box within the color, meaning this is where any kind of color starts because um, if you have a clean piece of paper, you can do any color at all. Um, and this is just taking me into this section of having this, um, this other paintings. We have some people around us right now. Maybe you, they're online as well. So, um, so back to, the, back to this uh, beautiful bleach. Miss Sophie did the bleach. And um, for the next seminar, we will give you a lesson and a speech of how to use the bleach because that is, as I said earlier, the holy grail. Oh and yes. it's, it's, it's an education itself yeah, to it know is. and to, to really uh, manage how to work with bleach. Yeah. Um, so uh, this will be on our next little session. Well, any questions, everyone? I have one concerning bleach. 
when you're bleached hair, is there any <laughs> specific, oh, sorry, specific things that you have to, to consider? Do you, do you bleach it? Do you use toners? What do you do? I mean, bleach, uh, as we said on the previous, uh, is, is just like using the process to, to really build up any kind of color. Mm. So by bleaching, you are removing um, uh, either it's the natural uh, tones, uh, uh, the pigments, or artificial ones. So, so getting rid of um, either or, you do have these different processes uh, in a bleaching. So when it leaves the hair in, um, in any kind of state, it's either yellow, orange, or if we go down to basics, it's red. Um, so in, in that concern, you would always have to use a toner on top, mm -hmm. leaving the hair in, 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 in a good condition, um, color-wise and um, density-wise and in the structure itself. And then you can put any kind of color onto, but as Sophie always, you know, we're always discussing this uh, bleaching yeah. thing because yeah. wherever you would say the color would go, Sophie, it is depending on the, on the, on the, on the evenness. Yes, definitely. So, yeah. so much is depending on the way you apply the color because a bleach is not a normal color. You have to take care of it mm -hmm. even more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so would you say that you know when you are bleaching, it's just the way that you you are in between some some uh, some work. I mean, the process of getting the hair into yeah. a another state of yeah, mind. It's a pre-stage, you could say. It's a pre-stage, yeah. Yeah, yeah, to uh, to push it in into another dimension. Yeah, because when you have the clean base, then you can go everywhere you want to. Yes, yeah. exactly. And so, are you are you ready right now? Yeah. Over, over here, yeah. Yeah. Before you guys go on, I just want to say that if you have any questions, you can also buy, of course, you can re write it down here on YouTube, you can do it on Instagram, or you can write it uh, to us uh, via mail, and that will be on info at creademic.com. You can do that as well. Mm -hmm. And I actually got a question uh, concerning Nune, one yes. of our models. Yes, it's from and the Tapier. I'm just going to pull up the picture right here. Yeah. If you have a color like this mm -hmm. and you have a lady, there is, there's two cases uh, in this question. Mm -hmm. One is if you have a very dark hair, mm -hmm. for instance, let's say a level three, mm -hmm. how do you create this color? And the next question is if you have <laughs> a level 10, how do you create this color? Very nice, very, very intelligent questions. Uh, because, um, I mean, one outcome of one color is totally depending on, as Mark is referring to the question, on uh, the depth itself. So going from a depth three, I would, I would in this situation, aiming for this color, as you see on the screen right now, I would most definitely go for a pre-bleach. Mm. I would, um, and, and, and again, that's just, you know, uh, a little uh, cue from our uh, bleach um, session we have to do a bleach a session because yeah. you know there's so many things within going from one color to another mixing bleach. Mm, but uh, one of our um, newest invention uh, in terms of you know having this uh, uh, crossover from one color to another is to use bleach together with a shampoo. So we actually wash the bleach mm. through the hair yeah. just to really clean it up, to remove any buildups, yeah. and actually to move to remove uh, the, 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 um, the natural tones as well. Yeah. So going from a three with a, with a bleach and a shampoo mm. in, uh, in let's say for five, 10 minutes, wash it out, acidic sealer on top of it mm. so that you clean up the hair, you make sure that you go down to the pH again, mm. restore the hair. And then with this mixture, I just told you, um, which is the uh, mixture of a 10 to three Inoa, together with a 640, 6% peroxide, and you will have this beautiful color as you see on Nune. Mm. Otherwise, if you are uh, going from a beautiful, blonde, natural looking lady, let's say like a 10, and you would do this recipe, I would just do the same recipe, like I just said, mm. 10, 2, 3, 6, 4, 0, and then just using a 3%. And that's what the whole, you know, um, color magic is mm. about. Having 
in mind that the color is totally depending on mm. you yeah. with the know-how and knowledge of using percentages. Yeah. Yes, percentages. That's, that's also why the a good way to get the clients to come to the salons because we're able to make a color that it, they won't be able to do at home. So of also course, selling the clients the professional that, yeah, view exactly. of a color, and um, and and that's what it's all about. Yeah. Oh yeah. Any other questions, Mark? Not for now. Not for now. All right, guys. Yeah. So, um, so what I want to I want to show Sophia's technique yeah. close up. So I'm going to do a little bit. If you just stay there, Sophia, I will grab the camera. Yes. So you have to be excused for it being a little shaky, but I'll go oh, okay. close to you. Oh, very nice. I'll just stand still here then. Welcome you on stage. <laughs> so as Mark is doing the uh, close up. Um, so you can see the actual sectioning that Sophie did. I will ask Miss Sophie, do you have yeah. any favorites? So I'll just explain here the sections here. So we have the triangular shape on the top. Then we have the square in the diagonal shape. You can even see it more now how diagonal it is when the foils have put in here and then Again, you can see the last one going from the triangle, uh, from um, the square shape here, down all the way back here. Yeah, so really having the rounded shape and making sure that the two colors are not um, hitting each other as or going in together here. It's still with a specific um, with the shape here in between. You have the foils on the sides as well. So lady one and lady two. Thank you so much for that, Kira. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> All right. Yeah, cool. Yeah. All right. All right, so, you so um, keep this head so close to you. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> All right. So uh, I'm finished for today, actually. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I think that this is uh, it for now. Uh, we want to thank you for spending time with us. And um, hopefully we'll see each other uh, out there because uh, this is really strange, but, um, but uh, at least I want to thank you for spending time with us and uh, see you in, uh, in the real world. Bye for now. Bye for now. <laughs>